Hi everybody, uh, Ryan here once again. So today we got a uh, International Pro Star with a uh, Cummins ISX-15 in it. Truck came in for uh, high differential pressure. They couldn't get it to regen. The soot level was like almost six ounces, which is uh, above normal, severely high. So that's like the highest notch to where it won't let the truck regen anymore. So we checked the differential pressure sensor, actually put a new differential pressure sensor on it to make, we checked a couple other things prior to that to rule out it just being a sensor. I ended up just putting the new sensor on it just for good measure. Whoever worked on it last, uh, they broke the two probe, uh, there's two little probes come off the differential presser. There's little, there's little uh, couplers. Somebody didn't, I guess they thought they pulled, had to pull the clips out or something when those you just press them in. So those are broken, they had zip ties in them. So it was, that's what kind of made us suspect about everything. That's why we threw a new deep, uh, differential presser sensor on it. After I did all that, it still wouldn't region. And I got a couple tricks out there to kind of force it or trick it into doing a region to get that soot level down back to our normal level. First thing I did, I'll show you guys on the computer out there. We're, I'm doing this inside right now because it's, I had, when I do my regions, I do them outside because it gets extremely hot. It's hot enough to where if you got like a weed burner on your truck, it can crack your concrete in your shop if the concrete's colder. So that's why we do them outside. And it's a little loud, a little windy. So that's why I to give you guys a little overview inside the, uh, the building here. So uh, on the computer, what, what we ended up doing with, uh, we're using Snap-on ProLink uh, uh, Edge Ultra, the newest Snap-on uh, ProLink that they have out there. So what we did was, first I went and did a DPF DOC reset and that enabled us to start it. The, uh, I was able to start it to initiate a region, but then it kicked out after about five minutes. So then I went back in again and I did a DPF filter installation, basically like saying that I put a new filter in. Did that and went back and reset and then it actually went through a full region cycle. Been running out there for about an hour and a half. Uh, soot levels down to zero, normal level, and our differential pressure levels dropped from like almost five inches of mercury down to like a half an inch of mercury right now. So. Uh, with that, we'll run outside, we'll show you guys a couple things, and uh, go from there. All right, so it actually finished up the regen, it's idled back down, so it must have, did, it must have finished up while we was inside there. Um, this is all extremely hot right now, probably at 700 degrees plus, even after it stops. Uh, so these are the, the hoses, the probe hose. This is a differential pressure sensor here. Put a new one on. We also put a new harness on this as well, this little jumper harness. That's a Cummins part. So here's the, the probe tubes that I was talking about. There's supposed to be a clip in here, and to remove these on this side, all you gotta do is press in, and this will pop out. So I don't know if somebody thought they had to rip them out, but they had zip ties in them. So we're gonna put new tubes on it here this weekend, and uh, do a couple other things on the truck. So, so yeah, like I said, if you ever try to take these off, all you gotta do is there's a little black piece here that's solid. You just press that in and this will pull off. So I don't know what, what the, the breakdown was in that process. All right, so here on the uh, Snap-on ProLink Edge, regen test completed. It's a differential uh, pressure sensor voltage. I believe this, this voltage normally when the truck is off should be 0.61 to 0.77 volts if it's under like 75 degrees or something. Don't quote me exactly, but around that, around that temperature, ambient temperature. Uh, DPF soot loads, we're down to zero now, which is a normal level. Um, when we started, this was like almost six ounces, which is extremely high. This, this showed above normal, most severe levels. So it was, it was at the point where we was getting the OEM code for Cummins 1922, 1922, um, which at that, play, at that stage is not gonna let you force regen. It wants you to take the filter out and clean it. Uh, differential pressure, right now at idle, we're down to basically nothing. Um, before we were almost up to five inches of mercury, so extremely high differential pressure. So pretty sad, pretty happy with the way that everything worked out here. And uh, we actually put this filter in for this gentleman back in March, a brand new filter. Um, so I really was, uh, I, I was trying to find a way to avoid and actually having to take it out and clean it. And given that it was only like eight months old, uh, but I guess he had some electronic issues and kept running the truck. And the thing is, when you have one of those issues, 
you need to get it taken care of immediately because if the truck ain't doing its regular regions, it's going to keep building up, building up, and building up soot to where you're going to be forced to do take it to somebody that knows what I just did or you're going to have to take it out and clean it. Or in this case, this guy, he had it someplace where they just wanted to delete it. And um, I think most of you all know my stance on that. I don't recommend it in our day and age. Um, I'm going to go back through this. So we did to get it to regen. We went in. Uh, we did a reset the DOC and DPF. Um, it, will, it won't. It, you have to do it while the truck's off. So we did. This is what we did first, and we was able to get it to start doing a regen. Um, then after it, it cut out, I actually went down and did an after treatment maintenance uh, filter installation. And you have to do this when it's running too, or when it's not running. Then after I did that, I went back and did the the reset the DOC. And then after I did that, it was a, we was able to get it to go through a full regen and clean back up. So now all of our check engine lights are off. Obviously, I got a high temp for the exhaust on since we just did the uh, regen. But um, other than that, we should be good to go for a while. And last but not least, uh, we're here at our fault section, and we have we cleared everything. Uh, the truck's been running, zero active, zero inactive. So the nineteen twenty, the nineteen twenty two and nineteen twenty one, both those code faults have been uh, cleared. We should be good to go. So uh, hopefully, no further issues down the road with it. And uh, like I said, we saved the guy from having to take it apart and uh, and clean the filter or replace it and all that stuff, which a lot of shops would probably just default to doing that. So when you don't always have to. So uh, I have another topic I want to talk about today, um, and that's a new application that I found out there. It's called Rig. Um, really interesting platform program. It's almost like an Uber or a Lyft for mechanics, uh, roadside services, and truck drivers, owner operators, company drivers, even company drivers, um, if your company will let you, or they'll get other companies to get involved. But it's a way to connect uh, independent mechanics and uh, drivers, owner operators out there. Basically, like I said, just like you would with an Uber driver or Lyft or something, you get on their app if you have if you need a tire done, uh, put that, put in there what you need, and then it connects you with these other vendors or uh, suppliers or service providers and uh, from there you, they're able to compete for your business so it's a win-win for the consumer i think it's a really good idea for especially for smaller independents like myself that are trying to get their their foot in the door so uh, on both sides of the fence whether you are an independent mechanic independent driver i think it's a great platform so we're gonna have more to follow on uh, on on the app and uh, some more things to talk about here down the line but if you haven't downloaded it yet uh, we're gonna put a link in in our videos below to, to check it out so if this is the first time you're hearing about it get online check it out and uh like i said more to be following in the future Okay, so uh, back in, out of the uh, cold and the wind out there. So in summer, guys, the main thing is like if you're having an emissions problem or, and you know your truck isn't doing as regular regions, CPF lights are coming on, it's better to get that stuff checked out sooner than later because it's going to get to the point where it's going to make it harder and harder to force regen that truck and you're going to have to get kind of creative in the ways that I did to make it happen or you're going to have to take that filter out and have it cleaned or replaced. Sometimes it's quicker. We found in our a little bit more but quicker if you're in a time crunch to replace the filter, but still you're into labor taking that filter out, new gaskets, clamps, half the time they break, the clamps are really expensive. So like I said, the main moral of the story is if you're having sensor issues or something like that, and you know that filter isn't regen and, and getting cleaned out, uh, to get it checked out as soon as possible before it comes more of a major issue. Pretty much that's uh, the main thing of the, the main moral of the story today. Like I said, if you do have a, uh, a pro link or something or a Cummins Insight, those are a couple of tricks that you can use to, to try to trick it in to being able to, to do a forced region to get it cleaned up. As you can see, um, we started out at really high soot level and it did clean up back down to zero. So that's pretty much it guys. So I uh, appreciate you watching. Thanks for the support and everything. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, uh, hit the bell for the updates, like the video, and uh, we'll see you next time.